On today's Film & Whiskey, we're on location to break down how to make one of the world's most famous bourbon cocktails, the Mint Julep, just in time for your Kentucky Derby. We'll also be reviewing Kinnard & Drake from Boone County Jail Distillery and see how it holds up in this cocktail. That's all ahead on Film & Whiskey. Hey everybody, welcome into the podcast. We are back with another special bonus episode. The bonus episode. I love that you don't even let me finish my intro, Brad. You're you're so excited for this. I'm just so pumped, dude. Listen, I'm pumped too because we are recording at the Crafted Cocktail Company in Wadsworth, Ohio today. First of all, Brad, it is so rare that we get to see each other in person nowadays that it's just it's good to see your face, man. Vaccinations, man. I tell you it's what, a beautiful thing. <laughs> they, they truly are. <laughs> but also, we are preparing for Kentucky Derby Day. This is a huge day in the world of Kentucky bourbon. Uh, Brad, we have a cocktail to make and to talk about today, and that is the mint julep, the signature drink of the Kentucky Derby. And in order to talk about it, in order to make it better than we ever could, we've brought in Scott Sauer, who's the beverage director at Crafted Cocktail Company. Scott, how are you today? Wonderful. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. We are super excited to be here. I, I guess, Brad, we haven't done one of these how to cocktail episodes in a while, but we've gotten some really good feedback on these episodes, haven't we? Yeah, it seems like. Unfortunately and unfortunately, not everybody drinks their whiskey straight. Yeah. And like there's a certain part of me that like dies a tiny bit. I'm like, yeah, like there's so much to offer. Right. And in, in all the co in all of the whiskey world that I want you to try it straight. But in the end. Let's be really honest. Cocktails are freaking delicious. Cocktails are delicious. And that's what we've tried to do with this this series of bonus episodes, especially when we were all in lockdown, was to introduce the world and our listeners to some of these really classic bourbon based and whiskey based cocktails that you could make from the comfort of your own home. We're not getting incredibly fancy with the ingredients here. And when we come to the mint julep, I don't know if it gets more simple or more classic than this. And so, Scott, I'm super excited to have you on board today. You are going to kind of be our guide through the world of the mint julep. What can you tell us about this drink, especially from like a bartender's point of view? I know it's probably a pain in the ass to make this drink, especially on Derby Day. Uh, yeah, you know, we uh, yeah, with Derby Day coming up, we'll be uh, cranking out hundreds of them. But uh I, I do like this drink. I think the number one concern uh, that bartenders tend to have about this uh, has to do with, one, the, the storage of fresh mint and keeping enough on hand and keeping it fresh, uh, which is much, much easier to do on a smaller scale. And unfortunately, with uh, as many cocktails as we do, we go through it often enough that uh, we're able to keep it nice and bright and fresh. Um, and then you have the... You have one mistake that I think that a lot of bartenders uh, make when it comes to the mint julep. At least in, in my eyes, it's very, very much a mistake. And uh, somebody's going to, you're going to get some comments in your section after this episode, I'm sure. Uh, but one thing that and I see everybody screw up when it comes to juleps, mojitos, and the like is they throw that mint in the bottom of the glass and they just muddle it to smithereens. Uh, that's absolutely the opposite of what you want to do with mint, with a light herb. You're trying to extract the oils and you get those by just lightly bruising the outside of the leaves. When you break down the mint, uh, when you're muddling it, you're actually breaking into some of the layers of chlorophyll that give it that like bitter, grassy, earthy taste that you're not really looking for. You really, what you want is those bright mint oils. And you get that just by lightly bruising the leaf with a slap on the wrist or a, 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 of a bar spoon before you go to shake or stir. Uh, it doesn't really need much more effort or energy into it than that. So that's my number one piece of advice. So when it comes to the ingredients list of this cocktail, it really could not get more simple. We're just talking sugar, bourbon, and mint, essentially, right? I mean, there's there's really nothing else to it. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, one thing I love about the mint julips and one of our approaches to cocktails in general is anytime you see one of those basic formulas, 
don't feel so limited to, you know, you'll have again in the comment section, uh, everybody's going to argue over super fine sugar or, uh, or regular sugar or a simple syrup. Um, what's so great about these recipes is treat them as formulaic, you know, not so much as, you know, Hey, what do you have on hand? Try, try honey instead of sugar. Try, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going to try our house, uh, our crafted julep that uses, uh, Demerara, um, and uh, yeah, it, you know, just use whatever you have on hand. Treat it as more of formula. You know, you have in this case, you have spirit, sugar, water, mint, you know, yeah. or, or herb even if you wanted to do it with basil instead. I know? was just going to say you probably could sub basil in for this. One thing that I, I wanted to ask, though, or I wanted to kind of make sure that we hit on. We've got the basic ingredients here. We've got bourbon. We've got either simple syrup or super fine sugar. You've got your crushed ice and you've got your mint. And Scott was already talking about muddling the mint. And we haven't done a cocktail where you've had to muddle anything in a while. I don't think since we did our old fashioned episode. Right. We've steered people, Brad, towards a couple kind of very basic bartending sets that you could buy for your house. And they usually come with a muddler. Scott, can you kind of give the the intro or the beginner's advice to muddling things? Like, obviously, you get this kind of uh, mortar and pestle kind of look to things when you are grinding things against the bottom of your glass. What does it really mean to muddle something? How do you know if you're overdoing it, especially when it comes to something like the mint julep? Yeah, yeah. So again, with the mint, you just want to give it a light bruise. You know, uh, as far as the muddler goes, um, you know, honestly, you could hold the mint in the palm of your hand and just give it a couple of smacks and that'll do enough to, to release those oils. Uh, typically, we reserve the muddler for uh, ingredients that you're trying to literally mash into it. Uh, things like fruits, things like blueberries, blackberries, um, or things like sugar cubes, if you're going that direction. Uh, and, you know, for that, it's like with any of the great things in life, it's on the wrist, right? Uh, you just give it a nice firm grip on the base and, and uh, press down with a twist and you'll start to break down the sugars. Okay. So, so again, how do you know when you're like overdoing it? Like if you, if you over muddle mint, I have to imagine it gets kind of bitter or like there's something that has to happen there that you know when you've overdone it. Yeah. If you're, if you're breaking the leaves uh, at any point, um, it's, it's, you've gone too far, uh, you know, and you'll even start to smell that, like, like I said, that bitter, earthy, grassy taste, mm -hmm. uh, with the julep, you're really just going for that bright, oily smell. Um, and no, no need to muddle further from there. So as we get into talking about this cocktail, there are many different variations on it, but it seems like this and Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it seems like this is one of the most kind of heavily guarded uh, recipes in the bourbon realm. Like everyone says you have to make it this way. It has to be in a julep glass, which is this fancy kind of metal tumbler. It has to be crushed ice. You have to garnish it with a sprig of mint. It just really seems like of all the cocktails, this one is the most insisted upon as being like the classic variety. Bob, my desire is incessantly to prove you wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's been pretty obvious at this point. Oh, for However, sure. you're right, man. Like people are just jerks about this. Like you have to do <laughs> it in this one way. Otherwise, you're not having the mint julep experience. experience. Right. Right. Which leads me to ask Scott, like, why is it presented the way that it's presented? What is the history of the mint julep here? So I'm going to go ahead and just blow everybody out of the water uh, with with oh. this one. Um, He's so humble, folks. You know, this is this is this is this is this is the most wild. The Kentucky Derby, you know, and, and you think about when you think about uh, the mint julep, that's what everybody immediately goes to is uh, the Kentucky Derby and bourbon. And, you know, it's one of the classic bourbon whiskey cocktails. The original mint julep recipe didn't even contain bourbon. Bourbon wood didn't even exist back then. So uh, that, that's that's clearly a lie, Bob. I don't know who <laughs> I don't know who you're bringing on this podcast. <laughs> so what was OK? I'm assuming this is like, you know, pre 1700s then. So are they using like brandy? What are we using as the base spirit? here? Yeah. Yeah. So the first published mint julep recipe came from uh, Jerry Thomas's bartender's guide in 1881. And in that he recognized uh, when writing about it, that the mint julep had existed already for many, many years prior to that publishing. So um, in that guide, the recipe calls for cognac, which was the spirit of all spirits back then. You know, if you were anybody who was anybody, you drank cognac. Fast forward to the mint julep, 
in the late 1800s, there was a bug called phylloxera uh, that uh, happened in France that wiped out uh, about 40 to 60 percent of the French grape crop. Uh, it practically ruined brandy production. And that's what really paved the way for a lot of these cocktails to switch to their more modern day recipe with whiskey. Once that happened, it, it stuck. It, um, you know, that's where it really expanded. And whiskey was starting to become the, the fine American spirit that it was then. And um, the julep was a natural switchover. So. so, Scott, let's say that you want to build a mint julep at home. Like you are going to go all out. You've gotten your you you went to the store and gotten your mint sprigs and you want to go all out and build this in the traditional sense. What do you need and, and how do you build a traditional mint julep? Absolutely. So my my recommendation for if you're just going for a nice classic julep is take uh, about two to three ounces of your bourbon or whiskey um, and. You know, there's a lot of arguments over sugar versus fine sugar versus powdered sugar. I would say your best bet at home is just to make a simple syrup. You know, it's one of the easiest things to do. Just measure out equal parts water and sugar and just stick it on your stovetop for a minute or two. You know, keep it stirred up and you're good to go. You know, so add about half an ounce of simple syrup in there uh, with your whiskey. Take eight to nine of the brightest, most healthy looking mint leaves that you can find. Um, Pro tip, uh, it works very well if you keep your mint sprigs on ice uh, prior to making the cocktail. It'll actually help pull the oils to the leaves uh, just prior to mixing. Um, then, So you pluck those leaves, give them, uh, give them a couple of smacks in your palm with a muddler or a bar spoon or even your other hand. Uh, you should immediately notice the aroma uh, coming off of that into the air. Uh, throw it all in your shaker tin, give it a good, uh, give it a good few shakes and pour over the ice of your choice. Well, and honestly, Scott, we just watched you do that a few minutes a ago here with what we're drinking today, which is a Kennard and Drake whiskey out of Indiana. Yeah, Brad. So this whiskey that we we're drinking today, Kennard and Drake, I don't know if it's Kennard or Kennard and Drake. So let's just decide now. Are we saying Kennard? Kennard. Kennard and Drake. Yeah, clearly. This is from the Boone County Jail Distillery in Indiana. This whiskey is sourced, so it's sourced from MGP, which uh, if you're in Indiana, it's basically a local place to source from. What we're drinking today is a five-year aged MGP high rye bourbon. So from what I understand, it is 36% rye, which is an incredibly Bob, high rye bourbon. That's a lot of rye. It is. Brad, we're going to go ahead and take a, a couple sips of this just neat and see what we think of it as a whiskey. Uh, I can already say from having a couple sips of what Scott has whipped up in terms of this mint julep. This whiskey goes phenomenally in a cocktail. It really does. But we're not here to talk about cocktails, Bob. We're here to talk about straight whiskey. Drinking it neat. Brad, what do you think of this whiskey uh, in terms of the nose, taste, mouthfeel, finish? What are you picking up here? It's surprisingly, it's surprisingly light on the nose, almost to the point of being absent. Um, mm -hmm. And I've only ever experienced that two or three times in the whiskey world. And... Every time I'm like, what, what is going on here? Do I have COVID? Like what's, what's, what's wrong? Why, why am I not, I'm not smelling anything. What's, what, you know, where's, where is the aroma? It's just, and I'm, I'm just confused because I'm, I'm looking for all these notes and, but then as soon as it hits the palate, it's all there. It's mm -hmm. like, it was all hiding in the whiskey. It's creamy. It's caramely. I'm getting butterscotch. I'm getting like some lighter sugars, but that rye spice that comes through at the end. Yep. Uh, personally, I love this whiskey. Yeah, I was going to say, it's really impressive once you get it on your palate. Yeah. Like you said, the, on the nose, you're really not hitting a lot of notes. It obviously smells a little bit like rye. There's a little bit of spice there. It's mostly ethanol. But it's it feels like it's mostly ethanol. But once you jump into the actual flavor, this is a really impressive whiskey. You're hitting all sorts of nice sweet notes that get fused with that rye. And I'm just, I'm a really big fan here. So, yeah, this is a 92 proof high rye bourbon. I think it drinks hotter than 92 proof. Like I would have thought this was at least 100 proof. But you guys are right. Um, it's it's pretty much just ethanol on the nose. And then it really kind of packs a punch once you get into the flavor and the finish here. And honestly, I don't know that I could have picked a better whiskey for us to use as our base for the mint julep today. And as we kind of segue into talking about more things that you can do with the mint julep. So we've talked about 
the kind of basic classic mint julep, which is usually made in a julep tin or a julep glass. Uh, Scott, you have basically made us one that you call the crafted julep. What what are we dealing with here and how is it different from your standard julep? Yeah, absolutely. So the mint julep that we've been discussing so far is very much uh, shares many qualities with a classic old fashioned. And uh, again, treating some of these classic cocktails as formulaic, uh, it's easy to you know, substitute out and switch things up a little bit. So uh, for the crafted julep, I would consider this a combination uh, right down the middle of the of a, a bolder spirit forward old fashioned with the mint julep. Um, so for this one, we're using uh, in addition to the uh, the whiskey, we're using um, our house made bitters. Uh, which is cardamom heavy uh, with notes of cacao and orange. And then uh, a little bit of, and the same use of mint, but this one is again, more of a bolder spirit forward. So there's not even any shaking involved. We just uh, bruise the mint leaves like we discussed earlier, uh, throw it into the tin for the stir. Uh, and then we're using Demerara sugar, which uh, has a higher concentration of molasses. It's like a, uh, more of a raw or a cane sugar than um, than your than your plain white or even your sugar in the raw, your turbinado. So I definitely encourage everybody at home to toy around. You know, all this is available at your local uh, grocery store. So my question here, Scott, is if, if we get real for a second, if you take away the presentation and, and the beauty of the kind of classic mint julep, I guess where I'm kind of feeling a dissonance here is, you know, we did an old fashioned episode and the old fashioned is like, That's the basic whiskey cocktail, and you can make millions of variants on that, and everyone seems to be cool with making variants on that, whereas the mint julep seems like it's kind of surrounded by a... A mystique. Yeah, a mystique, but also a layer of bullshit, if we're being honest. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, like you have to have it in this kind of tin, and you have to have it with crushed ice, and I guess as a bartender, like... How do you distinguish between what your customer is expecting when they get a mint julep and and what's actually just bullshit that you can toy with and and tinker with to your heart's content? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to ask them is how it tastes, mm. right? I mean, that's 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 what it all boils down to is are you enjoying it? And don't get me wrong, I'm all about the 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 show and the garnishes and the big bold. Well, you've seen pictures at this point of like our julep and uh, our our classic mint julep, the the old version, the uh, the eighteen hundreds version, uh, and how dressed up and, and fruity it is uh, looking, anyways. Uh, and then you have this is which is almost the the polar contrast, right? You have yeah, this is more of a sipper. You're you're you have it over a sphere. In my eyes, they are very much both juleps. You know, yeah. they both follow that kind of formula. So what it boils down to to me uh, isn't so much uh, how it looks or the exact Difford's Guide recipe or, you know, what your grandma's cousin had that one time that she visited the Derby and, and all her girls wore hats, you know. Mm-hmm. It's about what it tastes like. It's yeah. about, is this enjoyable to me personally? You know, and that's what that's what the entire cocktail journey and the entire whiskey journey should be for everyone that n- enjoys uh, to imbibe. Yeah, Scott, honestly, here on the Film and Whiskey podcast, we have talked – all the time drink what you love right like in the end if you don't enjoy a specific type of whiskey then don't drink it if you love it then drink it if we come to you with a review that's like Meh, then but you love it great yeah. like honestly earlier today we were talking about old granddad bob and i really didn't enjoy that flavor but it is super popular with other people that's great Like, drink what you love. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at here is, like, if you like how your bartender makes a mint julep, enjoy that. Well, and the thing that that I'm trying to get out of here, too, is, like, if you go to Churchill Downs on Derby Day, you are going to be presented a mint julep in a certain way. Like, they're not going to make it in a tin for you. It's going to be in, like, a plastic cup, but it's going to be crushed ice. It's going to have a sprig of mint in it. It'll be a real fancy plastic cup. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) It will be what you you know, what your mind perceives as a classic mint julep. But if you're at home and you're just watching the Derby, there really is, if we're talking like in terms of recipe, Scott, there's no real difference here between this and an old fashioned other than the addition of mint. And, you know, even if you wanted to add some bitters here to bring out a couple more flavors, I think what what we're trying to say is feel free to play around with this recipe the way you would any other cocktail recipe we've done on this show. 
Honestly, a few weeks from now, we're going to be talking about infinity bottles and like how you can throw whatever you want in there. But really, the goal of that is make the flavor that you want. Like if you really like spicy rye whiskeys, put a bunch of rye whiskeys in your infinity bottle. If you like a really spicy mint julep, use a really spicy rye whiskey. Like that's fine. And I think that's again, that's the thing that we're trying to get at here is. The mint julep seems like it should be the most kind of democratized drink of them all. It's so easy to make. It's incredibly like you can have it over a giant sphere or on the rocks. You can have it with crushed ice. And I think what we've we've kind of done a disservice to the drink by forcing people to make it a certain way. So when you are watching the Kentucky Derby this weekend, if you want to just pour it over a rock, feel free to do that. If you want to go all out and, and crush the ice and garnish it with a sprig of mint, Feel free to do that as well, but it is all the mint julep. But right here, right now, we have two mint juleps in front of us. Scott, can you talk to us about the two mint juleps that you made for us? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the first one is definitely your more classic version um, that you might find in and around the derby. You know, it's got the uh, the special derby glass and the crushed ice, you know, very, very well shaken with the mint. Uh, and we're using that, uh, Kennard and Drake, which just goes phenomenally with, uh, with this julep, um, and, you know, some nice mint undertones to it, but it's, it's light, it's refreshing. Uh, and then the second one is the crafted julep that we were discussing earlier, more of a sipper, more of an old fashioned style with the bitters and more of a stir, you know, not quite, doesn't have quite the dilution to it. And what do you guys, what do you guys think? I mean, honestly, in terms of the flavor of both of them, it's hard to distinguish between them. And I think that's kind of the point here. Like I watched Scott go through all this rigmarole of the presentation and the preparation of the classic version. And then I watched him do the same thing with the modern version and just pour it over an ice sphere. And part of me is like, just make it the modern way. It tastes exactly the same. It's just as good. And I think that's why I'm kind of trying to like destigmatize the idea of the mint julep here. I don't know, Brad, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, when you come down to it, there is a certain amount of beauty to tradition, right? Like there's something about that process that calls back to something from the olden days that we all love and care about. But if you're, if you're just purely looking at flavor and, and deliciousness, they're both phenomenal. I mean, they're both out of this world. And honestly, like you said, I think this Kindred and Drake is a great mixer for the mint julep. Absolutely. I mean, it stands up on its own neat, but I don't think we could have selected, and it was a random selection, I don't think we could have selected a better whiskey as our base for the mint julep. The high rye content really adds a layer of spice that stands up to the dilution of the ice as it melts. Kennard and Drake, Boone County Jail, knocking it out of the park here. Let's go. Yeah, Bob, I, I've just been blown away with Kinder and Drake. They are great straight. They're great in a cocktail. And, and really, that's what you're looking for in a whiskey, right? Like, there's certain high-end whiskeys that you're going to pay triple digits for, and you want to drink it straight. But for the really great whiskeys that, that I drink on a regular basis, I want it to be great on its own. I want it to be great in a cocktail. Because in the end, that's what I have in my house. And if you're like me... These are the types of whiskeys that you're looking for. And I, I really think, you know, Kenner and Drake is knocking it out of the park. Well, once again, we want to say thank you to Scott Sauer of Crafted Cocktail Company for joining us today. Scott, you have treated us so wonderfully. These two mint juleps in front of us are absolutely delicious. Uh, do you have any events coming up or anything you'd like to plug as we get into derby season here? Yeah, absolutely. We've got the derby coming up. You know, if you're in and or around Wadsworth, Ohio, definitely come visit us at Crafted Cocktail Company. We'll be throwing our fifth annual uh, Kentucky Derby Party, complete with uh, two different kinds of mint juleps, the original 1888 version and our spiced up uh, crafted mint julep. Uh, more modern take, as well as uh, Derby Punch. And of course, we'll be playing the Derby live, sound and all. Uh, you can also check out, uh, if you love whiskey reviews, you can also check out our uh, 10 Weeks of Whiskey um, that we just wrapped up on our Facebook page. Bob was gracious and joined us for a couple of episodes um, that he's been fantastic, uh, great whiskey knowledge and great reviews. So check that out. Those are on our Facebook and our website. We will be back on Monday with another regularly scheduled episode. But until then, I'm Bob Book. I'm Brad G. 
and we'll see you next time.